Hey folks, today I'm going to be assembling and trying out this new metal cutting bandsaw that I've just purchased. This one is branded by Clark, who are a UK importer of tools. This bandsaw is made in China and sold all over the world fairly inexpensively and branded by lots of different companies. So I'm going to open the box and see what's inside. So the first bits of sheet metal are part of the base of the saw. From the reviews online, the base is the thing that lets down the saw. It's very flimsy, looks like 1.5mm steel or even lighter. So that's something we might have to replace in the future, but we'll do for now. This is the little table for when you're cutting vertically. A book. More parts of the table or the, the base. And bolts, pulleys, the belt cover, some sort of adjustment rods, and then the unit itself. So we have everything unpacked now and out of the box. Hopefully everything is here, it looks to be. There is no proper instruction manual on how to put the thing together. We do have an operation and maintenance instructions that comes with the book but it's more suited to how to adjust the blade, the guides, the belts, etc. But it does contain a parts list and an exploded diagram, which will be useful if we need to reference anything to that. So we're going to start by putting the base of the saw together and we will see how that goes. So the two pieces of sheet metal either side of the base are identical, so we can start with whichever one we want. They just fold out, they have little hinges welded on them so they can pack easier. We have got four of these little metal 90 degree angle brackets. These go into the four corners at the bottom to give it a little bit of stability. That will be the first, first thing I see is very weak so far that I would upgrade. If you had a heavier bit of angle iron, cut it to length. Then we have this bracket and a bar that the wheels mount onto. So we're going to start with that. Put the bracket through. We have six split pins included. I'm going to use four of them for these. And then the wheels mount onto the back panel and the holes should line up, they do. And the bolts go through the brackets. We're going to use a washer on both sides. So 
So next to the tray it goes on, it goes on kind of upside down with the lips pointing upwards. I suppose the idea is that you can put things on it and they won't slide off. There are about a dozen bolts that come with it. Um, you'll see ones that have a flat washer on the side compared to a fully rounded washer. So they're the ones we're going to use for this so that there's room for it to slide in. On the far end of the base, or the front end, there's this little handle that pops in and is secured in place with two split pins again. So that is the stand fully assembled now. We've tightened up all the bolts and made sure everything is square. And I have to say that is the flimsiest bit of construction I've seen in a long time but it'll do to get us up and running. Next step is to lift the saw, the bandsaw, onto the top of the stand. The sheet metal goes inside the frame of the bandsaw. It's quite heavy, I think it's about 55 kilos or 60 kilos, so try and do it yourself or get help. So we have it all attached now to the stand. There are three bolts at either end, 12 mil bolt and a 14 mil nut which is a little bit odd, but it has stiffened it up somewhat, still not that amazing and very low to the ground. So the next step is to put on our pulleys, our belt and our belt guard. So this is our belt guard, comes with the belt inside it and it also comes with a little micro switch for safety so that when you open the the guard it turns the saw off if it's running this mounts onto here we have to remove this 10 mil bolt on the locking bolt for the motor and we need to remove the two screws on the gearbox input side Should then go on. We can put our screws back in. We're not going to tighten everything up too much yet because there'll be a bit of adjustment when we get our blade or our belt tension set up. That's our two screws and our 10 mil bolt underneath. Next we need to remove our micro switch. in this little holder and we have a wire loose at the back with two spade terminals and a little gland so we're going to take the cap off the gland and pop the wires through and we need to put on our two Spade terminals onto our micro switch. Doesn't matter which way around these go. Now, before we tighten those up, 
we're going to check that the tab on the cover is clicking the micro switch in and out which it is we can hear it so that's good the little tab on the cover can be bent if needed so we'll snug these down no need to over tighten them or you'd risk damaging that switch tighten the grommet back up with the gland So we have two pulleys to mount. The smaller of the two goes onto the motor and it has a keyway to pop it in until it's fully seated. Top of the shaft should be level with the top of the pulley and it's a 3mm grub screw. So use an allen key to tighten it up. Down on the input shaft of the gearbox it's just a slotted shaft there's no keyway and the pulley goes on the opposite orientation to the motor. So we're going to pop it on till it's level with the shaft and tighten it up before I fully tighten it. Just going to check that the two pulleys are level and they are. So we can snug up that grub screw. It's tight enough. And pop the belt on. And leave it on the middle setting for now. Lovely. So we can tighten down the motor. There's two bolts either end where it pivots and then the 10 mil bolt underneath to tighten the blade guard down or the belt guard. The last thing to set up before we can give it a test run is the start stop switch. So we can lift up the saw out of the way and we have these two screws that hold the switch assembly on. and our earthing terminal. That looks to be making a better connection now. So it's time to plug it in, I think. Have we anything left? We do have a few bits left over, I'll show them to you. So these are the parts we have left over. This here is the table for when you're cutting vertically. And that is a little support that goes underneath it somewhere. And a screw, countersink screw for that. This plastic thing, I have no idea what it is. I think it's part of the shipping, possibly to hold the blade guide in maybe who knows and this is an adjustable stop for when you're cutting if you want to cut things to the same length that goes in and tightens up when you set your stop but we have nothing else left over so that's always good so it's plugged in now and we're just going to give it a quick test run to see if everything is reasonably set up i haven't touched any of the guide rollers yet the guide bearings or anything. <coughs> I'm just going to try it out and see what it's like out of the box. Seems to be okay and it is turning off and on so let's get a bit of stock in and see what happens. So here we have a little bit of 40mm box section clamped in. This is fairly typical to what I'll be using it for. Just small box, angle, tubing, that sort of thing. So I haven't changed the spring tension or the angle of the vise or anything. 
So we'll just, just try it out and see what happens. So that took almost two minutes, two minutes, a minute, took one minute and 45 seconds on my watch. Let's see how it fared. We probably could adjust the speed a little bit, and maybe the tension. But the cut looks fairly good. Let's get a square and see what it's like. So that on three sides, three sides are absolutely perfect. One side is tiny little bit off, but for a first test, I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to leave that here for now. Um, might make another video if we build a new stand for it, but it'll take a while just to get used to the settings and the speeds and probably have to buy a decent blade. I mean, the blade these things come with, not the best.